Good evening, everyone. My name is Mr. Irish and I'm principal at Charlotte's Collegiate Academy. Um, it's lovely to be able to talk to you tonight, although it is disappointing that yet again, we're not able to hold our induction evening in person um, and for you to be able to come and visit the school and, and see the facilities and the, the areas where your uh, children will be working. However, we are looking forward to running summer school and to welcoming your children into the academy um, during summer school. Um, and again, it's really exciting that that will be without restrictions in terms of bubbles and having to wear face coverings. But I shall talk a little bit more about that later on. Um, tonight, what I want to do is to take you through some of these points so that you have a, a greater understanding about what Charlotte Collegiate Academy stands for um, and what you can expect for your child and, and the support that we would like uh, and hope that we'll receive from you uh, throughout the next five years, at least that your child is with us, and seven years if they choose to come to our sixth form. The first thing I want to say is thank you for choosing Charlotte Collegiate Academy. I'm very, very pleased that um, you chose us. Um, we did have um, a large number of applicants this year and I will talk about that shortly. Um, but it's great that yet again we're full and that means that we will have um, a very rich and, um, uh, and, a, and a strong variety of people with which to enhance the education of your child in September. So to take you through some of the preparations that we've been doing for um, year seven, the first thing is that there will be a dedicated entrance for year seven and that will be off Grange Road. Um, one of the things that we have found throughout COVID is where we've had separate entrances that actually it's made the, um, the entering and leaving of the academy at the beginning and end of the day much more smooth where we spread uh, the children out in the way that they leave. And the entrance for year seven will be on Grange Road and we will write to you over the summer and share some videos that will show you where that is and, and what to do on the mornings that you arrive. Um, it will be the same for uh, summer school, but again, we'll, we'll get the information out to you about that. Um, you will not have seen, but you may know, but our L4L team have got a dedicated base that is just for year seven and for year eight. And there is a whole floor of 10 classrooms that will be just for year seven. Um, and that allows, we believe, the year seven to settle in really well to, to school where it feels more uh, like an environment they're used to, very much like a, a probably a little bit larger primary school than they used to, but it will have, it certainly has that feel about it. And we then aim to introduce the children to the rest of the academy and to specialist teaching rooms such as design and PE and science as we move through the year. Um, but for the main part of their time, there'll be a dedicated block for year seven, and it's only used by the year seven and eight children. Um, I'm very pleased to say that we will not be working in bubbles um, next year, based on the guidance that we received earlier on this week from uh, the Department for Education and the government. Uh, there is an opening up of school and a, a relaxation in terms of restrictions that we'll have to we have to follow, and that will be um, that's very welcome for us because it means that. Uh, your child will get to access the specialist teaching areas that I've talked about earlier on. So that's that's a great relief to us and I'm sure it will be um, be a great relief to you as well. Um, we will be contacting you during the summer um, where we will, we have been um, asked about by the DfE to carry out asymptomatic testing in September and essentially that's doing a lateral flow test in school um, in the first week that your child comes back. Now that is not compulsory, so we do need your consent in order to do that and we will send this information out to you uh, again in a letter throughout the summer and ask you to reply to us about that. Um, it, we did it for all of the, the school when we returned to school in March after the last lockdown, so we're very, very, um, we're very good and very, uh, uh, very much able to do that. Um, and I have to say we had over 70% of families agree to the testing this year and uh, we had no issues in doing it. So we hope that you will take up that offer. Um, but as I say, that um, th that that depends on on your view of whether you want your child to be tested or not. Um, we will not require students to wear face coverings. Again, this is based on uh, the new guidance and that will also be the same for summer school. There will be no need for children to wear face, uh, sorry, face coverings in summer school. And again, I'm very pleased about that because it will allow um, staff and students to interact uh, more clearly um, in the classroom and outside uh, during summer school and it will create a much more friendly environment. Um, however, as, I, as I've said, we will write to you with more details about um, all of these changes over the summer so that you, uh, you're fully aware and ready and prepared for returning in September. 
Now, those are just a few of the things that will be different to uh, to normal years, um, but things that we think will definitely make it a much better experience compared to um, the experience of uh, over the last 18 months, where I'm sure we're working in bubbles in the primary school. Um, I, I know the children didn't have to wear face coverings in primary school, but we did here, um, and it's a, it's a great relief to everybody that we're not going to have to do that. So we're very much looking forward to a much more normal experience and uh, induction for uh, the new uh, year seven when they arrive with us for summer school and in September. Um, I do want to talk to you a little bit about our trust just so that you know we are the founding school within the trust um, and uh, this is how our trust has grown over the uh, over the last four to five years. Um, it's a very exciting time for the trust. It creates lots of opportunities uh, for our children to collaborate across the trust with the three other secondary schools that we have in the trust being Thorns Collegiate Academy and West Brom Collegiate Academy um, and uh, it, it, there, there will be opportunities for competitions but also shared learning opportunities for the children and so we have a variety of um, experiences that uh, we can look forward to that being part of a wider trust gives us um, the trust the central team so that is based at Charland again that's um, that's great because we are the founding school um, and so many of the um, many of the the processes and the opportunities that there are for other schools in the trust they usually start here which again is a great opportunity for, for your child and for the, the students of Charlton to take part in. Um, it's important over the next couple of slides that I just share what our mission and our values uh, are. Now these are um, the trust values um, and all of our schools will follow these. The three values that you can see on the left hand side are the missions for staff and we want our staff to be leaders of learning so to be innovative in, in, in how they prepare lessons and how they teach. Uh, we want them to help to change the attitudes of children towards a variety of, um, of aspects of learning, um, of culture, of um, how and where we live and in order to do that we need to inspire them to make some of those changes and we also want our staff to promote cohesion. And by doing that, as I said, there are opportunities to collaborate with outside agencies, but also to collaborate with other schools so that we we uh, we bring our community together. And in order for students to be able to to meet those uh, mission statements that we have for staff, then we need our students to aim higher. We need them to see further. And by that we mean that they, we want them to to look at what they're capable of doing and capable of achieving and, and to actually aim higher than that, to think that this is where I'd like to be, but we can be better and we'll provide plenty of opportunities for the children to do that. See further has um, a variety of meanings to see that there is a world outside the community that we live in. Um, there's a, there's a, a world that we can help and support outside of our school. Um, and that, that also then expands into regional, national and international opportunities. And that may be through a variety of charity work, but also just through our personal uh, PSAG curriculum where we can see how we can support um, incidents and issues that are going on across the world. And then to be concerned for everybody, that is about the behaviours that we show within school and how we treat our peers and treat each other, but equally how we can support people who are less fortunate than us across the community, the region and the nation and, and again internationally. And we believe that if we if we really work towards supporting and using those as our values within school, that we will uh, at the end of the time here create well rounded students who are successful, um, but who are also empathetic, empathetic to the world around them feeds into to my mission and whilst I don't I try not to read slides I will read this one. Um, I do want a school where students are happy and achieve well beyond their potential somewhere that they feel valued and important. I want to develop their awareness of their own health and well-being physically and mentally and our students should be ambitious for themselves and others and feel that they are capable of achieving their ambitions. We should develop students with a sense of pride in the academy who want to be involved in all aspects of academy life students who believe that they can and will improve their skills, knowledge, abilities and life chances, chances through practice and hard work. Now there's a lot of information in there, but essentially it, it is a, I, I have high expectations uh, of all the children who attend Charlie. I want them to work hard and whatever they want to achieve and feel they can achieve, I want them to aim higher for it. But I want them to do so in the knowledge that they need to take care of themselves and that in order to be successful, they need to feel that they are healthy, both physically and mentally. So we want them to look after their physical health and well-being and their mental health and well-being. And if we do that, then 
by having a pride in their academy, they'll have a pride in themselves and a pride in our community. Um, and that they should get involved in that and not allow education or their lives to just happen around them. They need to be involved in it and take ownership of it. And if they do that, then they'll understand that by working hard uh, and that by practicing, they will uh, improve the skills, improve their knowledge and improve their abilities to be able to affect what's happening around them. So it is a, um, it's a challenge for me and it's a challenge for, for the staff in the school and it's a challenge for your child and it's one that I'm, I know uh, we will rise to and your children will rise to because the evidence over the last 10 years that I've been at Charlton shows us that, that that is the case uh, and that's how the school grows from strength to strength. It isn't about one group of people, it isn't about the staff, it isn't about the children, it isn't about me and the senior team, it's about all of us working together to ensure that we create an environment where everybody wants to be successful. So you, you will know a great deal about Charlene, but just to, to remind you some of the things, um, we have been the top performing school in Sandal for a number of years. We're a growing academy, uh, including our sixth form. Uh, technology uh, is absolutely central to, uh, to what we do. Um, we have been a teaching school, and that means that we still support and train teachers. Um, and again, that creates um, a, a great environment for your, your children because the, the new staff coming in um, also have uh, allegiances to university and uh, are based at universities and therefore their, uh, their training is grounded in research and the latest developments, which means that we get great experiences put in. We're one of the highest progress aid scores in the borough and we have done, particularly in the last um, round of public examinations, which was in 2019. Um, and again, we are still at, at uh, Ofsted Outstanding. Now we are expecting to be uh, to be visited again um, soon, and I'm really looking forward to that because it has been a while um, since they came to uh, to visit us, um, and I'm really really keen that they come and that we get the validation of all the hard work that we do um, at Charland and the way that we support students, the way that students support each other, and the way that we work collaboratively to create an outstanding experience. Just some names and faces for you to uh, to know. This is our senior leadership team. Um, and we have got an extended senior leadership team of te senior teachers um, and obviously all our heads of departments and heads of year, which you'll get to know over the years. Um, these are the people who help me to run the school uh, and to ensure that we have a um, very tight experience for your children and a great experience for your children. Um, in the first instance, Ms. Buana leads on, uh, is my vice principal and she leads on Key Stage 3. And so she's probably the first person, one of the first people that you will get to know. We are heavily oversubscribed uh, for the 275 places that we had available this year. We received over 600 applications. So the reason for saying this is it's um, it's great that you've uh, that you've managed to come through that process and be successful in uh, in your application. And um, in return for you placing that faith in us, then we're going to provide an excellent opportunity and an excellent education uh, for your child. This is just to reiterate that we were, uh, we are outstanding uh, at our last inspection, um, but we weren't just overall outstanding. We were outstanding in every aspect that they uh, that they viewed us. And my view is that we still are. But as I said to you, I'm hoping and expecting that they will come and visit us this year and we'll be able to show that not only um, are we still outstanding, but that we've improved from that, uh, that basis that we built on uh, a number of years ago. This was our progress uh, figure for the last um, the last public examination process that we had, and that was uh, 0 0.3. The, uh, the na national average was 0 0.08, so we're well, we were above average um, in the progress that children made. Now, we continue to, to work hard during lockdown and we provided, um, we provided online learning right from the first day of lockdown, and I know that was different to many other schools, but because of the way that we use technology and the way that we uh, that we work within school when we're open in general, it meant we were we were ready to deliver um, online learning right from day one of lockdown back in March uh, of uh, 2020. Now, the government haven't released the results uh, nationally um, and progress uh, progress figures uh, through the teacher assessed grades and the exams that the students have done uh, during lockdown over the last two years. So this is the last set of public results we have, um, but I'm confident that our results in those two years and the, the teacher assessed grades that the children will have received will continue to show that outcomes for students here are above average expectations. 
Search Ireland will um, will be part of transforming the education that your child receives. And we do that because we have regularly, as I said, been the highest progress at school in Sandwell. That is delivered through outstanding teaching, teaching and through um, outstanding engaging engagement in lessons from uh, from children. It, it needs to be a two way process. You don't get to achieve, achieve um, above average results if education is done to your children. Um, your child will be expected to take a full part in their education and to engage in it and will be shown how to do that and what that means um, so that they feel confident to be able to ask questions and to be involved in it because in order to be outstanding as I keep saying it has to be collaborative. Um, outstanding in our last three inspections so it is we know how to uh, deliver outstanding education we know what it takes and we continue to do so. If we hadn't continued to do so, if any of our key indicators had dropped over the previous uh, seven years, then Ofsted would have turned up to us and could have turned up to us and they haven't. So what that means is that we continue to improve and continue to show that the publicly available data is outstanding. Our attendance uh, was outstanding at the last time it was reported and continues to be, although COVID has had an, impl uh, an implication on attendance, but it has done for all schools. Um, but we do expect children to be in school. It's one of the things that is an indicator of how good the school is. If children don't want to be here, if they don't think school is outstanding, they won't come. And so to have an above average attendance figure means that the majority of children want to be here. Um, and we have one of the lowest fixed term exclusion rates in the borough. Now, again, that's really important to me. We are an inclusive school. We will do everything that we can to support um, support children and support their behaviour and look at the causes behave, of behaviour so that we can we can start to have an impact on uh, reducing the amount of behaviour that, that events that there are in school. Um, we don't just fix term exclude children. However, we do take a very, very um, traditional approach to behaviour. I, I expect children to behave. It isn't a case of us having to remind them and, and that that isn't the norm. The norm here is that children behave and if students don't, then we'll address it. Um, I have a team of non-teaching staff who are there to support behaviour and to intervene where necessary so that lessons aren't disrupted. Uh, that team is called our Behaviour Management Services, which is BMS, and um, they are visible. They're on the corridors, they're in lessons, making sure that everything is OK. And essentially the reason for that is I, I employ teachers to teach and I strongly believe that uh, they should deploy behaviour management lesson uh, uh, strategies to support behaviour and that there should be in lessons an environment where learning is at the centre of what we do. And if students disrupted and persistently disrupted, then they're removed from that learning opportunity and we work with them to understand why they felt that that was appropriate behaviour or what were the triggers and how can we support them to not behave in that way again, whilst at the same time administering the sanctions that we need. Now, on the majority of times we do get this right, but there are occasions when uh, we may get it wrong and it's important that this is a, a collaborative process between families and staff. Um, we will communicate if there are issues and we will communicate what those issues are and we will ask for your support um, in dealing with those so that um, your child and all of the students at the school know that this is a partnership, it's a working together and that um, we want the best for the children and that we can work together in order to achieve that. So some of those standards, they are around uh, the, the punctuality and attendance, they're around making sure that our uniform is well worn and Mrs Bates has put a lot of effort into um, sharing what the, the expectations around uniform are and you can find that on our website and it's really important that that is the place that you go to. Um, children will make statements around what are acceptable forms of uniform and shoes, uh, trainer style shoes and those are not acceptable. Uh, the exact type that are will be available on our website and equally in the same when it comes to um, hairstyles and hair colours again we're looking for um, you to look at our website so that you'll have an understanding about that and potentially any makeup or um, uh, um, jewellery so that you understand what our expectations are. Attendance, we expect children to attend and be here on time and punctual to, uh, to registration which is a key part of it and not to think that that is, uh, is optional because it isn't. Um, there will be key messages and also key opportunities to begin the learning and particularly around our personal social and health education curriculum which is delivered through tutor time. So our registration times are learning opportunities and it's really important that children attend on time for that as well. And 
the key to it, of course, is and the reason why we do all of this work is to ensure that we make outstanding progress. I don't just accept average. I want everything to be outstanding. I want to provide a world class education for your child and I want to make sure that your child engages in that. And we'll need your support to do that because all of that together will lead to the outstanding outcomes for your child at the end of their time. So you can expect an outstanding curriculum um, and these are uh, the, the, the pillars that create that outstanding um, achievement for your child. Um, so it is a curriculum and in year seven and eight you'll have heard of Alpha and you will hear more about that in the meetings with your, with your child's form tutor uh, later on this evening. You'll hear about how we use technology um, and how we in individualise that so that it, it supports your child's needs. Um, and you'll also then hear about some of the traditional values that we have that I mentioned around standards, behaviour, attendance, punctuality and uniform. And all of those pillars mean that we can provide an outstanding opportunity for you, for your child. Now, homework is also done uh, very differently here uh, and it's done in a flipped way where often your child will be given videos prior to a lesson and asked to complete work based on those videos that will uh, inform staff as to how much your child already knows so that again we can personalise the lessons to your, your child specific needs and we always, always ask for your support in, uh, in making sure that homework is completed. So I've mentioned world class opportunities um, and I do believe that if we create an environment where uh, outstanding is the expectation, uh, whatever uh, we take part in, then that raises the aspiration for, uh, for your child. Um, and some of those aspirations are around our performances in the arts, some of them are around technology, but all of them are around our extra, extracurricular activities that support and complement what we deliver during curriculum time. And I hope you, that some of, these, um, some of these examples will show you how we aim to go about doing that and the fact that if we go to compete in something, I expect to win, I hope and I, and I want the children to expect to win and that we deserve to win and deserve that um, because we have every right to compete and your child has every right to expect to compete with all schools across the country and we've shown that we have a good um, uh, a good reputation for doing that and we complete, compete against the best private schools in the country, the best grammar schools, the best state schools in the country and that we're, we are now viewed as one of those uh, schools and I want your child to, to build on that reputation and to add to it over, over the coming years. Now it may be a question that, that you're asked and I think probably um, it now has more relevance than ever but why do we use that technology to, to support learning? Well more than ever it has a relevance. It has allowed us to, to bring learning uh, into your homes and into the homes of our students where um, through the use of video technology and Teams, Microsoft Teams and um, other pieces of technology that we have we've been able to bring our learning opportunities into your home during lockdown. But we've learned that actually some of those um, aspects are uh, incredibly useful and have a relevance um, outside of lockdown as well. They drive the learning that, that takes place. It allows students opportunities to collaborate. It allows them to take ownership and take charge of their own learning and that they can move their learning on at, at their rate and at an appropriate rate. So it accelerates their learning. And for us, it has been and continues to be a game changer. And we see that most um, most in year seven when children from a variety of schools arrive together in, in Charlotte and we'll have had a variety of exposure to uh, to technology and actually when they start to come together and collaborate and see the difference that it can make it absolutely um, raises the bar for children and moves them forward at, at a much quicker rate and that's going to be more important than ever now given the variety of experiences that uh, the children will have had um, at primary school during lockdown. And these are some of the, th the, the extra opportunities that you will see the children will have and it's an opportunity for us to collaborate. So we use data, we use it to, to collaborate around data, we use it to create immersive experience for children and that's in our immersive room where we can uh, bring some uh, learning to life in front of the children and create experiences uh, where we can't go out and see them. We also use all of the Microsoft technologies uh, on a daily basis and again that will help um, will help your child in their learning and to access their learning both inside uh, lessons but also at home and it's things like TV school uh, and the arts where we put that technology into action to support children moving forward. And as we as I come to the end of my presentation it's important that you know that it's not just a one step 
to uh, from now to when you you arrive with us. We will have our induction days, which you're in the middle, your child is in the middle of, and whilst they are different to how they would normally be, um, they are. Uh, it is important that they are seen as the first step. Um, we then have summer school, um, and we have uh, three parts of summer school where we have the first few days after the summer, uh, after school finishes. Then we have a full week of activities, um, and then at the end of the summer term, we have another couple of days uh, that will help to. Um, to, to help your child prepare for the, for the step up into secondary school. Now, these are there to support your child, and I really hope that you will take the opportunities to engage in those. And I know a large number of you have already replied to us to say that you want to take up a space at summer school. It's really important that if you haven't yet done so, that you do, so that we have got everything prepared for your child and that we've got enough uh, enough resources available to support your child if they come. So if you haven't yet done so, then please respond to the messages that you've got and let us know that you will be attending. That's absolutely uh, key and important for us so that we can be prepared. Um, we do find every year that the children who have attended summer school really hit the ground running in September because it removes a huge amount of the anxiety um, because they'll have been on site, they'll see their peers and meet their peers and they'll also meet the staff that they're going to be working with in the coming year and again that's hugely important to us and I'd be really grateful if you did take up that opportunity and work with us um, during this period. And finally, it just remains for me to say thank you uh, for taking the time to listen to me. I hope that you have um, had a good day today and that the induction activities that we've laid on for your child um, really help them settle in. Um, and we really are looking forward to seeing you in summer school, um, but more importantly in September. Um, and again, I hope that you enjoy meeting the form tutors later on this evening and that you, uh, you have a good day. Uh, if you have questions, then please and make sure that you ask them to uh, to school and that you uh, will do our best to get answers back to you as soon as we can. So thank you very much and have a good evening.